thank you both for being here. Um, we want to do our part to promote uh, everyone getting the flu shots. Obviously, we get about 150 flu deaths every year. Last year was, I think, relative, I understand, about seven flu deaths last year. But um, in previous years, 330 some. Um, it's easy, it's accessible. Anywhere you go to get your COVID shot, you can get your flu shot. Always do. It's time for me to get my flu shot this week, and I'll be here on my calendar again next week for a booster shot. So, since I'm at JMJ, now that's approved. Um, so, and then you both are going, I won't do the booster shot, but you're <laughs> going to um, do the same, and then maybe you could just expound on that. And then, Dr. Weaver, if, if you would talk about some of the essays concerning uh, COVID-19 vaccinations for going all the way five year olds, yeah. how that's going to roll out and play out in a big way in November. Any questions, folks, my Perfect. Good job, sir. You don't want to talk at all before you? You want me to talk first? Okay, I can talk first. Yeah, sure. Do whatever you want. Well, I mean, I think the important thing is that this is a serious respiratory illness. Um, very symptoms very similar to COVID. We end up with, as the governor said, up to 150 deaths on average every year. We've had years as low as seven last year, but that's because of all the separation and the closures of things and the mitigation measures that were ongoing. And we had the highest number of Hoosiers get vaccinated last year. 51% of Hoosiers got vaccinated last year. Usually we'll run anywhere from 37 to 50%. To um, but it, this disease tends to attack those same high-risk patients that we see with COVID. It is the elderly patients, it's the people with underlying health conditions, it's our, our very, very young, very young children, and our pregnant patients. So I strongly encourage everyone to get their flu shot this year also. I think that we're following uh, fewer mitigation measures now than we were last year, so I'm very worried about the numbers being up. And I really want to make sure we don't add an increased burden to um, our hospitals as we go forward because we know our hospital system is already over the last five years. Right now our census is over, even though our COVID census is going down, we are still um, well over where we've been in past years at this time. So this will help if everybody and, gets it. And Hoosiers can get their flu shots in multiple locations in all the counties, yep. including IMS. Local health department, your primary care provider, your pharmacy. As we do IMS, we're doing flu shots out there, so a lot of our sites, our mobile sites, will have a flu vaccine too. So, heavy power penny comes with a flu shot. You've been given it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not. All
Lindsay, how long has the flu shot been around? <laughs> it was first developed in 1936. It's a question I had earlier today. When did it start? She knew it on the top of her head. She just read it yesterday. And it's, it's widely available in 1945. <laughs> yeah, could you imagine going through that pandemic with no vaccine? Yeah, we did it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Choose the farm they're not writing on. Yeah, it's, um, we advise people choose their non dominant arm just in case it's a little bit sore, so you don't have to worry about it if you are right handed. Yes. But it's fine either way. Tuesday through Saturday, 
through Tuesday, Tuesday through Friday will be open at 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. so we can get those kiddos as they come out of school and people after work. And on Saturdays we'll be open from 8 to 12. And we'll be offering the vaccine when it comes available and is approved, of course, for 5 to 11 year olds. Um, we'll have the flu vaccine as well out there. We offer Pfizer, Johnson Johnson, Moderna. You can get your boosters. You can start your series, and you can also get tested for COVID. You just can't start a call. <laughs> <laughs> Questions. Uh, we brought up the IMR Center, that's obviously a wonderful facility out there, but is there anything like that for the rest of the state who aren't in central Indiana? I mean, kind of do so, anything similar? Yeah, so we're still going to be going out with our mobile units and our strike teams across the state and offering 5 to 11 um, vaccines there as well. And as I mentioned, we know that we have sites across the entire state um, that are available and ready to start vaccinating 5 to 11 year olds. In terms of the availability of how many doses you're going to get for 5 to 11 year olds, is that going to be every kid in the state can get one as soon as it's approved, or are we going to have to eventually get enough doses for that? How, how soon will we have those? Right, so um, we do know the federal government has let us know they purchase enough doses for every 5 to 11 year old to get vaccinated if they, you know, if their parents want to get them vaccinated. Um, next week they're releasing 15 million across the country, um, which equated to over 200,000 for the state of Indiana. Um, and they're, like I said, they're going to start getting delivered early next week. And it's over 200,000 for Indiana, is that? The pop I, I don't remember what that's So that's is. just the first range. We, we, there's about 600,000 kids in that 5 to 11 year old range. And that's just the first bolus dose. If you remember back when we first got Pfizer and Moderna, they had that really big bolus that first week, and then it was a little bit smaller. We're expecting the exact same thing. Personally, I believe this first round will be definitely enough for everybody who's like waiting and excited to go get vaccinated. But we have no problems of being able to reorder it and get it very quickly. So if we do go through that very, very quickly, Right on Governor, you mentioned getting your booster next week. Um, it, is, it, is the booster now open to everyone? I know you're not quite at that age yet. So I just wonder <laughs> is the booster, can anyone go get a booster now? So about anybody can get it. That's booster. exactly how I worded it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so I think a couple of things. Number one, there are definitive people that should go get the Right, 65 and above, you need to get it. Underlying health conditions, you need to get it. Immunosuppressed, if you haven't gotten your third dose, you need to get it. If you are an individual who got Johnson & Johnson, the studies have shown that those individuals were really um, available and probably by data, uh, you know, could have gotten their booster as quickly as eight weeks. Which we learned a week ago. Yes, we just learned it a week ago. So if you've got J&J, &J, I mean, put that definitely on my list of people that should really go and get their booster dose. And then also, it's individuals that through exposure, whether, I mean, they mentioned teachers and bus drivers and governors who are shaking hands and out in big groups all the time, healthcare professionals. So really, I think that anybody who really would like to have a booster should feel free to sign up and get a booster if they want And that. you feel good about the supply. Yes. We do not feel that there's any worries with the supply. So that's what I said. I don't want to cut in line, but I don't want to go. That's what I preach and ready to do it whenever. So we scheduled this for the booster. But could have got it today, too. So I mean, punch the point in the public. If you, could get your, if you go to the track, as you can, well, you can get both. Right. Same day. And there's a lot of questions out there. A lot of even primary care providers are saying you shouldn't do both of them in the same day. Absolutely, you can get both your booster and your free shot at the same time. Is there any consideration for a mandate for the kids' vaccine, or do you think it's going to be a situation where you're encouraging people the same way they get their shots before school, like the flu shot, to also get the COVID shot? Same way. No mandate. The doctors highly encourage. Highly encourage. Uh, sorry. And by the way, can I just, just follow up on that? Uh, I mean, I think the information is compelling. Mitigation efforts work. And there's no better mitigation effort than being vaccinated. So it's true if you're 65 to 5. And so we'll continue to encourage that. Yeah. Sorry, for the doctors, um, our cases and numbers are trending downward again. But as you know, Halloween's coming up, yeah. it's going to get started getting colder. We're going to go back into the inside. Is there any concern that, um, you know, that we can see our numbers uh, rise like we did last year? 
Yes, we definitely have concerns about that. I mean, that's why we really want to get everyone vaccinated right now because we know, you know, basically just a little over 3% of individuals that were hospitalized were fully vaccinated. Otherwise, since January through October of this year, everyone has been unvaccinated that was admitted with, with COVID. So it is really critically important that people do get vaccinated, not only to protect themselves, but to protect those little ones, like the under five-year-olds that can. I've got a new grandbaby at home and an almost three-year-old grandson that I want to protect them. Some people that can't be vaccinated for certain reasons and other people that even when they're vaccinated, like the immunocompromised, still end up getting infected and getting very, very ill. The mortality rate in our immunocompromised population is very high with this disease. So yes, we have worries about that. We've seen that in other countries. As people go inside, um, there's less ventilation. So what we would say is, if you know the status of everybody in that room, everybody's vaccinated as part of your family, you know, I think you should feel comfortable, take your masks off and enjoy your Thanksgiving dinner. But I think if you're in a large group of people at a party where you don't know, um, especially if it's not well ventilated, I, I'll have my mask on, just until we know our disease burden is down. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> oh, Halloween is an outdoor activity, so I feel less concerned about Halloween. And kids are outside, I think they should go out and have a great time trick or treating. Well, it's a lot better though than the previous years, just because, I mean, last winter we did, last, you know, October, November, we didn't have vaccination, so mm -hmm. things won't be as bad. Yes, so, you know, even with our Delta surge, we, we had another surge. We saw more hospitalizations than we were comfortable with. But we did not see it to the extent that we had last fall at this time. So we truly believe that those peaks will still remain below um, what they were last year and hopefully even with the Delta surge. But again, the key to this is getting more people vaccinated. Is there that concern of sort of the flu and COVID at the same time of someone right. being able to catch well, both? The concern is that even though our hospitalizations for COVID are going down, we still have right now our hospitalization um, census for everything in the hospitals is higher than it's been for the last three to five years. So that plus the fact that we've lost a lot of our healthcare professionals, people that have just gotten burned out, walked away, retired, got another job, um, is really going to put a burden on our system. And even on good years with influenza, we do see influenza um, make hospitals go on diversion and other things just because they are having trouble keeping up with it. So. This is the way we can help decrease that burden on hospital systems because we know that our hospitals are full of people that have delayed a lot of their health care and now they're getting their follow-up of their orthopedic surgery or potentially their cancer surgery or whatever. This, this is still managing our way through this, obviously, and there's a lot of indicators out there that, that illustrate this point, but we still have the, you know, the Indiana National Charter employed in hospitals that are department corrections at Camp Atterbury on the board they're being stretched thin to try to keep this thing stitched together. And so we're not out of the woods yet, we're, but, we, but we are managing our way through it, and we know how to arrive on the other side of this by getting vaccinated yourself. So don't know that anything more than telling them the vaccine numbers when we look at death rates. We're still losing about 20 people a day, right? Um, so it's here, um, and it'll, you know, it's, it's, we got to be in it as long as it is um, taking lives from us. Yeah, right. This might be a little in the weeds. This is probably for you, Dr. Weaver. Explain to me the, the, the mixing and matching now of the booster shots. I think it, to a lot of people, it makes sense to mix and match Pfizer and Moderna in a two shot series. How does it work mixing and matching if you got Pfizer and then get a booster that's Johnson? How does that work? So when the FDA uh, like reviewed the data, I mean, definitely boosters showed that increase in antibodies, right? And um, increased protectiveness against hospitalization, increased protection, even against uh, symptomatic disease, right? Which is good. There's a lot of people who I just do not want COVID, right? I'm glad that it's keeping me from being hospitalized, but I also just don't want it. Um, I think the, the one I want to really kind of point out is I agree with you, Pfizer, Moderna, you know, all fine. Remember when you get your, your Moderna, if you have a Moderna booster, you have to make sure you let them know this is a booster because it is that smaller dose compared to the regular vaccine. Um, but for people who got Johnson & Johnson, like the governor, all people who got Johnson & Johnson are eligible for a booster right now if, you, if it's been two months since you got it. So it doesn't matter how old you are, as long as 18 plus, of course, doesn't matter um, if you're a healthcare worker, all of those things apply to the Pfizer and Moderna, but not Johnson & Johnson, because it showed a little bit decreased effectiveness. Um, so some people are saying that 
probably should get an mRNA vaccine for your booster um, with the Johnson & Johnson. But again, if you get the Johnson & Johnson booster, you got Johnson & Johnson as your first, completely fine, also improves your, or decreases um, your you know, risk of hospitalization, decreases your risk of infection. Um, one quick question on keeping the IMS uh, vaccine and testing open. Is, it, is any part of that, I know obviously kids are going to start getting vaccinated, so that'll put more demand on the system, but was any part of it, is there a bigger increase or demand of testing also that was part of that decision, or sort of what else played into the decision to keep that open? So we definitely are doing testing out there. We're seeing our testing numbers go down. As the burden of disease in the community goes down, people are, are less sick, so they're less likely to go out there. I mean, I think the exception would be if we start to get a lot of flu. I mean, the flu symptoms are very similar to the COVID symptoms, so we could see our testing demands go back up. But really, the big decision why to extend it was to be prepared to help out with the 5 to 11-year-olds. And we gave over 500 vaccines yesterday at the site. So we don't want to shut something down that is still successful in this serving this community. So that was the biggest decision. But while we're out there, we want to offer everything that we have to the community. You want to talk about the hours again? Yes. At the track, just as an example, there's you know we're, we're looking at the statewide as well, but because of the, the kids in school and the hours. Right. So um, Tuesday through Friday, we open from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. So we can catch kids after school, after school activities, and then on Saturdays we open from 8 a.m. to noon. Do you have any concern that the president might? make a deeper or more of a federal mandate for the vaccine for kids at all? If that's a possibility, you can try to jump in there. We just have to wait and see what the administration puts out next week. Obviously, the, the one decision they made on uh, businesses may be delayed. We, we thought we would have more clarity on that yesterday or today. Uh, it looks like that may be delayed. I've just read reports, haven't spoken to the administration, that maybe until after the holidays. Um, so we'll, we'll remain in constant communication and contact with the administration as they roll out the new regs. Uh, to that point, obviously you have to see the regs. Really do. But uh, are, is the state OSHA prepared and able to enforce that mandate? Uh, these are some of the questions that we're asking the administration, how practically we can do this and what um, well, they believe that they can handle as well. Incoming calls suggesting it's happening or not happening, how it happens, when it happens, where it happens, how long they have to administer it. These are all questions that just quite frankly need to answers to. And, um, and it's not to say that I agree with that mandate. I don't, but we'll, we'll look to work with them 